The Japanese Maritime Self-Defense Force is one of the more powerful navies in the world. Its fleet is actually larger than those of the traditional European powers, like France and the United Kingdom. Over the past decade, of course, the Maritime Self-Defense Force has seen its position eclipsed by China's navy. Still, the Japanese navy remains a force to be reckoned with and remains a key player in the Pacific Ocean. Among its most important assets are arguably its eight Aegis Air Warfare Destroyers, the Congo, Otago, and Maya classes. This video is about the origins and capabilities of the Japanese Aegis Destroyers. To begin, we need to talk about the evolution of the Japanese Maritime Self-Defense Force during the Cold War and how it incrementally evolved from being geared primarily at anti-submarine warfare to come to possess both air defense warships in addition to the anti-submarine warfare ships. In 1945, the Imperial Japanese Navy had basically been destroyed. Of the immense fleet of the IJN in the Second World War, what was the third largest in the world, only minor units remained. The rest had been sent to the bottom of the Pacific Ocean. The remaining ships included minesweepers, a few destroyers, and surprisingly a single fleet aircraft carrier and several light aircraft carriers. These were used to repatriate the Japanese garrisons scattered throughout the Pacific Ocean. After this task was completed, the surviving vessels were mostly given to the victorious powers, or were scrapped. However, a few small units remained with the Japanese Coast Guard, and these later formed part of the future Japanese Maritime Self-Defense Force. According to Article 9 of the new Japanese Constitution, no offensive naval capability or indeed military capability could be established. However, by the early 1950s, the Cold War between the United States and the Soviet Union was heating up and the U.S. sought to incorporate the naval power of Japan as part of its naval strategy against its new communist rival. For this reason, the United States approved the formation of the Japanese Maritime Self-Defense Force, essentially the new Japanese Navy, in 1954. The new Maritime Self-Defense Force would initially consist of the surviving vessels of the former Imperial Japanese Navy, plus several warships transferred from the U.S. Navy, including anti-submarine destroyers. During the early years of the new Japanese Maritime Self-Defense Force, so between 1952 and around 1963, it was focused on anti-submarine warfare, primarily. And this was because the United States perceived the main naval threats from the Soviet Union to be from the Soviet submarine forces. The Soviet Union had acquired some very capable late-war German U-boats, the Type 21. The US Navy was afraid that the Soviet Union would mass-produce very capable diesel submarines, and of course later on, the Soviet nuclear submarines. Emblematic of this newfound focus on anti-submarine warfare, the first Japanese destroyer built in Japan after World War II was basically tailored for anti-submarine warfare only. The Harukaze-class destroyers were built by the Mitsubishi Heavy Industries in 1955. She had all the latest anti-submarine warfare equipment, including K-guns, depth charge launchers, and the Mark 32 torpedoes. The second Japanese destroyer built in 1957, the Uranami-class, was also heavily armed in anti-submarine warfare. In fact, the designers went out of their way to remove other equipment to make room for anti-submarine equipment. For example, the 5-inch guns from the previous design was replaced by 3-inch guns, which were smaller. The Uranami class featured a variable depth sonar, in addition to the heavy anti-submarine armament. Basically, the early Japanese warship design after World War II followed a heavy anti-submarine purpose. 
However, starting in the mid 1960s, something changed. Japan began to build larger air warfare air defense destroyers, in addition to smaller anti submarine destroyer escorts. Japanese warships between 1963 and the early 1990s can basically be split into three types of ships. First are the larger air warfare destroyers. The second are the large helicopter carrying destroyers, which are basically large anti submarine air bases. And we continue to have the small anti submarine destroyer escorts. The reason for this newfound respect on air defense capabilities is the development of Soviet naval bombers and cruise missile technology, which the Japanese Navy had to answer. The standard air defense missile system used on Japanese air warfare destroyers of the time was the US Tatar missile system. This is basically a double missile overarm missile launcher mounted above the deck. It fires the standard missile 1 medium range surface to air missile. For a time, the Tatar missile system seemed to satisfy Japanese air defense requirements. However, starting in the early 1980s, the Soviet Union started to mass deploy the Chupolev Tu-22M naval bombers, armed with the new and powerful supersonic Kh-22 cruise missiles. The Japanese Navy estimated at the time that its current ships cannot survive an attack by the new Soviet naval bomber. So a new class of air defense warships with more capable air defense capabilities was needed. So they looked to the new Aegis combat system developed by the United States. And this is basically the origin of the Congo class Aegis air warfare destroyer. And I'm sorry it took so long to get to this point. But I believe the background information is important. And I hope you found it interesting. The Japanese request to purchase the Aegis combat system generated a great deal of debate within the United States. The Aegis combat system had already been installed on the US Navy's Ticonderoga class guided missile cruiser. But it was still a new and very sensitive technology at the time. In 1988, the proposal went through congressional review, and there were two major issues raised. The first issue, supported by the US shipbuilding industry, was basically why not provide a total Aegis warship to Japan, instead of just selling the Aegis weapon system. At the time, Japan was seen as an economic competitor to the US. And the sale of a whole destroyer to Japan would give the depressed US shipbuilding industry some much needed work. The second question raised in Congress was whether the Aegis combat system should be provided to Japan at all. There was a concern among the congressional members that the Japanese might reverse engineer the Aegis system and build it themselves. Eventually, the US Congress approved the sale of the Aegis combat system despite reservations about the transfer of technology. The Pentagon responded to these concerns with additional constraints on the transfer of technology. Still, the fact remains that Japan is now able to build its own Aegis destroyer. By the way, if you enjoyed our video so far, please press the like button. The resulting Congo class was modeled on the US Navy's Ale Burke class destroyers. The Ale Burks were first launched in 1989. However, the Japanese Congos were built to different operational requirements, including the capability to serve as a flagship. The Congos were designed to carry command equipment and to accommodate command staff. For example, the Congo superstructure is actually larger than the basic Ale Burke to accommodate the headquarters of the Naval Task Force. This led to a greater displacement, 9,500 tons fully loaded, compared to just 8,200 tons for Flight 1 of the Ale Burke or the early model Ale Burks. 
Like the Ale Brook, the Congo has 90 Mark 41 VLS cells embedded in the front and back sections. Initially, these carry mainly the SM-2 Block II medium-range air defense missiles on the first two ships of the Congo class. And later on, the SM-2 Block III, including the Block III-A and the Block III-B. Eventually, this was used on all four ships of the Congo class. Presumably, the Congo's VLS can also use the RIM-7M variant of the Sea Sparrow short-range air defense missile, but I can't find any sources on that. In any case, the evolved Sea Sparrow missile became available later on for short to medium-range air defense. Additionally, the Congos were also initially armed with the ASROC anti-submarine missiles. What is missing though is the signature offensive armament of the Ale Brooks, the Tomahawk cruise missiles. These were not provided to the Congo, at least not yet. So on the surface, the Congo class emphasizes defense, especially air defense capabilities. And the focus on defense is in line with the stated objectives of the Maritime Self-Defense Force. The Aegis weapon system is built around the AN Spy 1D passive electronically scanned array, a radar array with four faces embedded inside the superstructure, providing a 360 degree coverage. The Aegis weapon system's maximum detection distance, the number of simultaneously tracked targets, reaction time, and missile range are superior in all respects in comparison with the former Tatar air defense missile system. In total, four Congo-class ships were built between 1990 and 1998. The lead ship, the Congo, was launched in 1991 and commissioned in 1993. The other ships are the Kirishima, the Miyoko, and the Chokai. Over the course of the late 1990s and the early 2000s, North Korea's ballistic missile program and nuclear program in general was gaining momentum. As a result, the Japanese Navy decided to go for anti-ballistic missile defense systems. Consequently, the Aegis ballistic missile defense system was incorporated into the Congo class and the Standard Missile 3, or the SM-3, anti-ballistic missile interceptors were also incorporated. Next, let's talk about the Otago class, the successor to the Congo. The Congo class has a helicopter landing pad, and this is actually longer than the helipad on the Ale Burke Flights 1. But similar to the Ale Burke Flights 1, the Congo class has no hangar for supporting helicopters on a long-term basis. And because helicopters are so essential for modern anti-submarine warfare, the lack of a hangar limits the anti-submarine potential of the Congo class. The new Otago class addresses this weakness by including a hangar for one anti-submarine helicopter which necessitated a 4 meter extension of the hull and an increase in displacement from the Congo by 500 tons to around 10,000 tons fully loaded. The Otago also has improved Aegis weapon system, the baseline 7.1 after commissioning, and this has been further upgraded to baseline 9C. It is also the first Japanese destroyer to be equipped with the ballistic missile defense system from the very start of commissioning. The vertical launching system is the same one as on the Congo, but the missile loading crane has been removed. Therefore, the Otago class features six more VLS cells for a total of 96 missile cells. The Otago class also offers a further reduction in the radar cross-section. The effective radar reflection area has been reduced, owing to better designed features for the mast and the superstructure. 
Basically, the Atago class is very similar to the Congo, with incremental improvements, particularly in terms of helicopter support facilities, anti-submarine warfare, the Aegis weapon system, the number of vertical launching cells, and a reduction in the radar cross-section. Two ships of the Otago class were built between 2004 and 2008. The lead ship, the Otago, was launched in 2005 and commissioned in 2007. Moving on to the Maya class, Japan's most recent class of air warfare destroyers, equipped with the Aegis Baseline 9C, which is newer than the Aegis 7.1 on the Otago although the Otago has been modernized to the 9C as well. The Maya features improved domestic anti-ship missiles compared to the Otago, and far superior to the Harpoons on the original Congos. The Maya's Aegis Baseline 9C is also capable of fielding the Standard Missile 6 or the SM-6, the primary long-range air warfare missile of the US Navy. The SM-6 is expected to be integrated into the Maya class by 2026 at the latest. Although for now, the SM-6 is not yet integrated into the warships of the Maritime Self-Defense Force. The long-range SM-6 is expected to work well with the Cooperative Engagement Capability, or the CEC, on the more advanced Aegis weapon system. It can share surveillance or targeting information between other CEC-equipped assets, including warships and combat aircraft, and including US or Australian assets. The Maya class can use the information to launch the SM-6 extended-range missiles outside its own radar horizon. Lastly, the Maya class features a new propulsion system not seen on its predecessors, a hybrid electric propulsion. This could be a first step towards integrating things like railguns and direct energy weapons in the future. In total, two Maya class ships were built between 2017 and 2021. Japan's modern air warfare destroyers are really the heavyweight front-line surface combatants of the Japanese Navy. The modern capital ships of the Maritime Self-Defense Force will always be a force to be reckoned with. It will be interesting to see whether Japan will produce fully domestic destroyers in the future, rather than relying on American destroyer designs. Very recently, Japan is seriously considering building two 20,000-ton anti-ballistic missile defense warship. They will be among the largest surface combatants built in Japan after World War II. You can find a video on the new Japanese anti-ballistic missile ship right here in the end screen.